Good afternoon. My name is Kylie Briggs and I'm the Northeast Turtle Conservation Coordinator for the Orient Society. Today I want to very briefly talk to you about a very common method used by wildlife biologists to estimate the population size of species in the wild known as capture mark recapture or just mark recapture for short. Uh, the basic premise of mark recapture is that usually it's impossible or prohibitively time consuming or expensive to count every single member of a species in a wild population. Uh, so instead we rely on population estimates through random sampling. Um, a very common analogy used to describe how mark recapture works would be say you have a big jar of marbles and you want to know how many marbles are in that jar uh, but you don't have the time or resources or interest in counting every single marble. Instead, you can do random samples to estimate the number of marbles in that jar. And the way you would do that is by first taking a handful of marbles and counting those. So let's say we get 10 marbles in that, in that handful. But before you put them back in the jar, you're going to mark them somehow so that the next time you do a random sample, you know how many of those marbles you've seen before and how many are new. So let's paint those marbles green, put them back in that jar, shake it up and then reach your hand back in and grab another random handful of marbles. So let's say you get another 10 marbles, uh, but only one of them has been painted green before and the other nine are new. Because we know the total number of marbles that have been painted, 10, and that one out of every 10 of these new marbles has been painted in the past, so that's 10%, we can use those two bits of information to roughly calculate how many marbles are probably in that jar. So 10% of 10, uh, you can back calculate through some simple division and figure out that there should be about 100 marbles in that jar. Now that's subject to some random chance because you grabbed a random handful, it's possible you could have had zero painted marbles or three. Uh, and that would lead you to an inaccurate population estimation. But by repeating that process time after time again, and every time you do it, painting all of the new marbles, uh, you get better and better estimates of what the total population size is. And we can do that with turtles or other animals through uh, other means of marking. In the case of birds, you might be putting bands on the bird's legs uh, with a unique number on it. And in the case of turtles, we're actually going to put a shallow notch around the edge of the shell uh, that I'll show you right now. So before I show you the notches on this turtle, I wanna show you this injury. This was caused, I believe, by an impact with a mower. This is not a notch that I put on the turtle. This would be uh, too large of a notch, um, possibly damaging or hurting the turtle. Uh, instead, we're just looking at these very shallow notches filed into the keratin around the edge of the shell. And uh, in this case, this, this turtle has three notches on it. And I would only need to put one on here just to know that the turtle has been seen before. But I also have an interest in knowing specifically which turtle is which. So there's a numbering system with the notches that allows us to give each turtle a unique ID. So here we have notch number 40, 200, and 10. And I know that just because of the location of each of the scoots or plates that have been notched. So 10 plus 40 plus 200 is 250 as long as no other turtle in this region is marked uh, on those exact same notches, then this turtle has a unique ID and I'll always know specifically which turtle this is. And that's really useful because uh, through that sort of mark recapture, um, not only can you estimate population size, but you can get some other really useful information. For example, uh, long-term mark recapture events have allowed biologists to figure out how long turtles can survive in the wild. Now they live a long time and in the case of wood turtles they only actually grow for about 20 years and during those first 20 or so years they'll develop growth rings on their shell and in the case of wood turtles uh, you can use those growth rings to figure out how old that turtle is up until they stop growing and then after that point their shell starts to wear down and it becomes difficult to count the rings that are there and they're not developing new ones and they might live for decades longer so how long can they survive in the wild in order to figure that out you have to capture one of these turtles when they're less than 20 mark it somehow so that a future biologist or possibly yourself decades later can actually catch that same turtle recognize that it was part of a study and then go back, look up the original data and see what year was it first marked and if it was young at the time, how old was it? And from those sorts of long-term mark recapture events, 
Uh, we know that similar species like the Blanding's turtle can survive at least 88 years in the wild. Box turtles can survive over 100. And wood turtles, uh, from those mark recapture sorts of studies, we know that they can live at least 55 years old of age. Uh, but there's very good reason to believe they can live a lot longer than that, probably into their 90s, maybe even more. It's just to have that sort of uh, long-term mark recapture event where you can actually figure out precisely how old the turtle is that long into the future uh, is very, very rare. So in this particular case, if I just want to know who this turtle is, I might not have marked the turtle at all because it has a, a unique recognizable feature on it, but I might not be the only person studying turtles here. I might move away in five years and someone else would come 30 or 40 years from now and start studying turtles here and they'd have a hard time recognizing those same turtles were it not for these notches. So uh, I'm gonna let this turtle go now. She was foraging when I found her. Um, I located her using radio telemetry so I have a number of turtles here that have transmitters glued to their backs uh, but we'll save that for uh, another time.